Hi everyone, this is Michelle Snyder from East Coast Healing Center. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified every time I post new content. Hit that thumbs up, encourage other people to watch, and you can share this video as well as leave a comment in the comment box. I enjoy hearing from each of you. It also encourages me how the things that the Lord gives me encourages you. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we have an upcoming tent revival here at 27 Chapel Lane in Boyertown at Laurel Mountain Ministries starting June 3rd and 4th. East Coast Healing Center will be there and the 3rd and 4th, the 3rd Friday, June 3rd, my husband and I are hosting our pastor. Saul Hicks will be there doing a revival service and the time for that is to be announced. We're not sure for how early we're going to start, but then all day Saturday on June 4th, uh, we will have a ladies retreat from 930 in the morning till three and Peggy Jones is going to be with me and partnering with me in ministry. So look forward to hearing more announcements about that. And then June 4th, Saturday evening, East Coast Healing Center will be preaching the revival service. And for the rest of the month, there'll be other ministries here every day and every evening. They're hosted by Laurel Mountain and they're each going to do their own ministries. So um, look forward to further announcements for that. You can also contact me at eastcoasthealingcenter.pa at gmail.com and my phone number is 610-781-6332 if you would like agreement in prayer. I am more than happy to pray with you whatever your situation may be. So as I said earlier, thanks for joining me again today. We're talking today about the topic of the absoluteness of God. Have you ever thought about the absoluteness of God and, and how can he be so absolute when we see that practically nothing is absolute in this world? There's always, you know, we have the laws of gravity, but then we can fly an airplane that defies gravity or Jesus when he defied gravity by walking on water. So in the world around us, we don't see absoluteness, um, but yet we do put our faith in those things that really aren't always absolute, but we expect them to be because that's been our experience, such as when we flip on a light switch, we expect and believe that when we turn on that light switch, we're going to be able to see better because of the lights coming on. But sometimes, you know, if the, the electric can go out for whatever reason, or starting up your car in the, you know, in the morning, and you expect when you turn that key that that engine's going to start up without any problems. And when it doesn't, then, you know, we, we get in a quandary, okay, now what do I need to do? So for the most part, we do put faith in things that we use regularly and expect to happen. And when they don't, that's when we start getting, you know, a little upset and okay, now what am I going to do? How do I figure this thing out? But God isn't like that. He is absolute and treats everyone with the same love, the same benefits, the same grace is available to everyone. And that concept is really hard for us to wrap our minds around because we live in a natural reality and faith is what we believe really in the inside in our hearts and, and what is in our spirit man. So there's this constant tension between the reality that we see with our eyes and have experienced physically but an inner reality from the Holy Spirit and from God that agrees 
with what his word says and that agrees with that inner knowing and inner witness. And when we're experiencing something outward that is opposing to what we know is inward, that's where we get ourselves into trouble because we automatically try to reason in our minds, well, how's this going to work out? Well, maybe it'll go this way. Well, maybe that way. And then we're like, God, help. You know, so that's what we're talking about today. And, you know, faith, the concept of faith is very simple. You know, Jesus said how, you know, when he was questioned, well, how do we do the works that you tell us we should do? And he says, well, just believe in me and believe that I am God's son. Just believe. That's the work. And the concept of faith is simple. Just believe. The application of it takes boldness and guts to live out and apply, but the results are always astounding. When and that's the the um, the tension or the 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 conundrum that we see ourselves in quite often. So I'm using my Peshitta Bible today and. When we take a look at Eve in the garden, when she encounters the serpent and he comes to her and we know the story, it says, um, now the serpent was more subtle than all the wild beasts that the Lord had made. This is Genesis chapter three. And the serpent said to the woman, <clears throat> truly has God said that you shall not eat of any tree of the garden so that reasoning that questioning this is the first time what she knew about God and her environment was called into question because she had never questioned it before because everything was sure everything was absolute up to that time she never even thought of questioning it and the woman said to the serpent we may eat of the fruit of all the trees of the garden but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And, the, and she was okay with that up to that point. This is what God said. This is what we do. This is how we live. That's it. But then this questioning came. The serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like God's, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, notice she saw with her eyes the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, that the tree was delightful to look at. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she also gave to her husband with her and he did eat. Now, at, you know, most people think that Adam was somewhere far off and she comes to him with the fruit and says, hey, this stuff really is good for you. Here, take some. And he just does it. But he was right there the whole time with her. And to what we know of, he never said a word. He heard everything. And to from what it says here, he was hearing the same words that Eve heard and looking the same way that she looked at the fruit. Pleasant to the eyes, delightful to look at. Hmm, she was tempted. The thought came to her mind, oh, well, maybe it is good for us. And so she started to question. And then we know what happens from there. The eyes of them were both open. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So the human reasoning entered in because of questioning, and, and that's what we do still, even as believers. We, we want to rationalize, how's this thing going to work out when God had already said, you know, this is what's best for you. This is what I have for you. It's, this is what, this is it, period. You know, the, um, especially when it comes to the cross. It's finished. It's done. But we don't understand absolutes because nothing in this world is absolute. There's always something coming along and saying, yeah, that applies most of the time, but, or we have relationships where 
someone may say, yeah, I, I promise, and then they don't follow through. So we're not used to people keeping their word, having integrity, or everything working the way it should or the way we're promised. Now, we're going to compare Eve here with Mary in Luke chapter 1 when the angel comes to her and tells her that she is going to bring forth the son. So we're in Luke chapter 1 and Gabriel says to her, starting in verse 31, For behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Yeshua, Jesus, which means salvation. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and there will be no limit to his kingdom. Listen to that. There will be no limit limit to his kingdom. Why? Because it's absolute. He set up the confines and the boundaries and the laws with which it would work. So we've got to quit using this and go with our heart belief. So verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? For no man has known me. She's not doubting. She's like, I don't understand because Normally, this is the way a man is born. So, well, how are you going to do this differently? So the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come and the power of the highest will rest upon you. Therefore, the one who is to be born of you is holy and he will be called the Son of God. And I'm going to jump to verse 37. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary's response is, here I am, the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel went away from her. So notice her response is, I don't understand with my natural mind how it's going to work because I know in the natural how a child is born, it is conceived and born. But nevertheless, I choose to believe what you're saying. It agreed with her on the inside even though rationally it didn't agree with her in her mind so she said here i am do with me as you need to to bring forth this limitless kingdom now we know that when jesus was on the cross his last words were into my hands i commit your spirit and he says it is finished so we know in our mind what God said, it's finished, I can't add to this, I can't take away from this, but yet, like I said, the, the concept is simple, the application is, is bold, and it takes guts to apply and to walk it out, but the results are astounding. The result of what Jesus did is beyond our human reasoning and application because it is a spiritual um, truth that is applied and experienced in the natural. But it starts in the spirit first. So we can get a picture of what that looks like that resonates with the truth inside and make the choice in our mind that, okay, this doesn't make sense rationally because I know how this normally works, but remember the kingdom is without limits. It's not limited to the laws of nature. And if man can defy the laws of gravity with the law of lift for an airplane, there's always an, an application in the natural that can defy another natural law, but it's the same way in the spirit because the spiritual realm created the natural realm and supersedes, will always supersede the natural realm. It's kind of like that experience, you know, when we're in, in church and a lot of um, services are saying, 
welcome Holy Spirit, you know, come Holy Spirit, because we're not really feeling him and we want to feel him. But yet God said, we know in Hebrews, and this is in the uh, Wust, Wust, as you say it, Wust translation, um, we know that God said he'll never leave us or forsake us, but then we're saying, well, I don't feel you. But God says, well, I never said I'd, I said I'd never leave you. I said I'd never forsake you. And it says here in Hebrews 5 and 6, verse uh, chapter 13, it says, For he himself has said, and the statement is on record, I will not, I will not cease to sustain and uphold you. I will not. I will not let you down. So that being of good courage, we are saying, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. So we see here this beautiful um, description that this statement is on record, that it cannot be changed, that God will never, never let us down. He will never leave us. He'll never abandon us or forsake us. Yet our experience on the outside may seem like, well, I don't feel you. I don't feel that you're near. And that's really because of going with our senses or our human reasoning instead of what he already said in his word that is truth and resonates with our spirit and going with what's inside and and just really refusing to go with what's in the mind so i was in a service uh, a couple months ago and i had i was holding my granddaughter and she just wanted to go in the back room and play and so she was being restless and distracting and she wanted to go back to her daddy so i handed her back to my son and I immediately, during the worship, um, was searching inside to connect with the Holy Spirit. And he said, Michelle, I'm right here. Because I, I was that searching inside. I know you're in there and I'm looking to connect with you. And I heard him say on the inside, Michelle, I'm right here. And I was like, yeah, okay, yes. And then I was able to experience his residence within me resonating um, inside and connecting with me um, physically as well i was able to enjoy the rest of the worship because of um, recentering and refocusing on his life inside of me um, i wanted to share this quote and this is from bill johnson in his book when heaven invades earth i had read several years ago but i like what he said here he said faith is not the absence of doubt it's the presence of belief i may not always feel that i have great faith but i can always obey laying my hands on someone and praying it's a mistake for me to ever examine my faith i seldom find it it's better for me to obey quickly after it's over, I can look back and see that my obedience came from faith. And then um, he said, in another place, he said, A surrendered heart is a heart of faith. Faith may quietly press in, or it may cry out very loudly, but it is always violent in the spirit world. It grabs a hold of an invisible reality and won't let go. Faith takes what is available and makes it actual. And that's what we know. Um, it says in Hebrews 11, 1, that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like the way he says that faith is violent in the spirit realm because as I shared earlier, the concept is simple. Oh yeah, just believe. But then it's our application, it's our actions that come as a result of what we know God is telling us on the inside, even though it doesn't make sense to our rational mind. And we know that the rational mind and the human reasoning came about in the garden. 
when Eve listened to that human reasoning, oh yeah, that fruit really does look good. Well, then it's got to be good to eat too. Even though she knew inside what God had already said, she was sure of that up until she began to question. Now she had a choice not to act on that human reasoning, but she let the human reasoning defy what she knew was already in her heart. So, and, and that's that um, place that we find ourselves in a lot. So it's when we choose to agree like Mary did. I know what it's supposed to happen naturally. I know that that's norm, the normal way things go, but nevertheless, here I am. I trust you. And so the absoluteness of God is that affirmation of what we already know that's on the inside and the absoluteness of that inner witness and that inner knowing in our spirit and choosing to listen to that inner voice, that inner witness, that inner knowing that God can't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Therefore, he said that all things will work out for our good. He said that we should not fear because there's nothing that man can do to us. There's no, he will never fail us. He will never abandon us. He'll never leave us. I don't always have to know how it's going to turn out with my rational mind. But if I refuse to question here and choose to believe here, then I will always experience the astounding results that are already available because he said it is finished. So I hope that this has encouraged you today. Remember always that God is for you. God is with you because he said he is. And God is inside you by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is inside of you. You know that. You know he's there. So if there's anyone, you need healing in your body. You need freedom from the do-it-yourself mindset, that do-it-yourself tree. You know, we have stores everywhere, the, the Home Depot and Lowe's, do-it-yourself. Um, but God wants us to say, I am your helper. I am your partner. I am with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You can have that healing now because through Christ it is finished. You can have that situation resolved right now. Just go with what you know is in your heart and refuse all of that questioning. So I agree with you that your healing is here. Your healing is already available for you. That situation that has been unresolved in the natural with that relationship that you've been believing for. It's already resolved in Christ. He's already got you. He's already got it figured out. He knows what he's going to do. You can trust that. And what financial situation he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. It's who he is. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. And I pray that this has encouraged you. God bless you. Till next time.